You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you for joining us for episode 1015, 1015. So glad that you are spending a few minutes with us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do appreciate it, actually. We, we really, really appreciate, uh, we appreciate your support, genuinely. Today we have a very interesting topic, but we are not going to ramble on for very long because we want to keep your attention. Today's question is brought to you by our sponsor, Fortress UAV. In fact, who's still fixing my drone. Um, excited to get it back. But uh, if you need to get your drone fixed before you decide to send it to DJI, go to fortressuav.com forward slash drone you and utilize their online system to book your drone into their system and get it fixed because, well, they know how to fix them. But they also served our country and they also are awesome. So check them out. Anyway, use promo code DRONEU for 25% off your drone repair diagnostic fee. Hello, my name is Skylar Darling. I work for a private power company. Uh, We recently started offering drone services. Um, We started off by using the M210 RTK V2 for electrical switchyard inspections. We are now getting into creating 3D models of these electrical switchyards as well. Um, I'm signed up for the mapping course in New York, and I am very excited for this. Uh, My question for you guys is, is the M210 RTK V2 the best drone to be using when flying in an electrical switchyard? Um, I know you guys had mentioned in a previous video that the Phantom 4 Pro has more resistance than the Matris 200, but you hadn't mentioned anything about the M210 RTK V2 because obviously it had not been released yet. Uh, I understand that these areas have a great deal of interference. Um, I'm just really curious to know what your opinion is on the M210 RTK V2. Thank you, guys. I appreciate everything you do. Cool. Thanks, Skylar. Appreciate the question. Uh, Appreciate you investing in the drone you mapping class. You're not going to regret that. Uh, Yeah, you're going to have a good time and learn a ton. I think you're going to have a fantastic time. We actually get to map some really cool stuff. So I'm really, really, really excited about this. For sure. So... Uh, electrical switchyard, electric switchyard, all kinds of interference, challenges mapping, something like that. All right. Wow. So this is going to be a fun Good time. Good luck. Um, okay. So really quick, um, mapping an electrical yard and station. I just want to say once again that the two clients that we've had for power utility inspections have moved away from that that platform. When we had said what we said at that time, it was because we had been privy to witnessing some DJI testing, and um, it seemed like the arc distance was shorter for the Matrice and the Phantom, meaning the Phantom could fly closer without having an issue. I don't know why that is. I really have no idea why that is. Um, I also do not know if the new Matrice 210 V2 RTK is going to work better or worse. I have no idea. But when I was sitting here, uh, well, I wasn't sitting, I was walking around our training field because I love to do that. Um, As I was sitting there thinking about it, I was like, you know, I know the new Matrice uh, 210 V2 can utilize the X7 camera. I just don't know how. Did they build an onboard um, storage device? Because the X7 does not store data on the camera. It has to be transmitted to a place where it can be stored. That was a big change from the Inspire 1 to the Inspire 2. In fact, I wish they would put it back the way it was because I think it works so much better when the onboard recording is onboard the camera and not the drone because it makes the camera payloads easier to, to integrate from one platform to another. That being said, the M210 V2 is supposed to be able to use the X7. I don't know if it works, though. I have no idea. Um, I I really don't. When I tried an M210 V1 with the X7, it did not work. So that being said, because I already have an Inspire 2, um, that's what I would use. And, you know, I feel bad for this client or this, well, I don't know if he's really a client, but this caller, because, you know, 
this just goes to show like it, it's just so important to get experience and also to get trained by experienced people because if you don't get trained by experienced people you're going to be making a lot of mistakes and it's going to cost you a buttload of money and hopefully it doesn't cost you enough money that it ruins your program or the plausibility of success of your program. Anyway, that being said, if it were me, I already have an Inspire 2, so I would use my X7 because I know it already works. And then I would actually utilize a 50 millimeter lens, the DJI UL 50 millimeter. And the reason that I would do that is because I would be able to map the power station with oblique imagery and um, slightly oblique imagery from let's say like a double grid and maybe um, our formulaic orbital stuff that we always do in our class, we always teach that. Um, because with a 50 millimeter, if I have a fixed focal length and I have a larger sensor like the X7 and I turn on the mechanical shutter, it, it, you have to turn it on. Just so you know, you have to turn it on. Okay, if you want that camera to be good for mapping, you have to literally go in the set in the settings and turn on mechanical shutter. So it does not default to that. No. Nope. Period. Nope. Cool. So very important. Another mistake, another nuance that people need to know. Gosh, there are hundreds of nuances. That's why, again, you got to go to this class. I should just have a list of nuances. But anyway, I would fly the 50 millimeter. I would do my orbits. I would do my double grid. I could fly at a higher distance. So I'm outside of the arc distance. Um, I, or excuse me, I would fly at a higher elevation to avoid the arc distance. Sometimes I get ahead of myself when it comes to speaking. Um, that being said, uh, for me, I'd use the Inspire 2. I know other public utilities have chosen to use the Inspire over the Matrice series. I think it's a lot cheaper to maintain. I think it's cheaper to operate. I think it's more flexible and more portable to operate. And with the X7 camera having such a large sensor and the ability to have interchangeable lenses, I think that's really his solution here. But I'm not sure if I answered his question. Uh, no, I think that you did. So, But the implication of, of what you're saying here is that the Inspire 2, you feel, would do fine in that uh, yeah. electrical situation. Yeah. As, well, especially because he's mapping a station, not lines. You know, if he's mapping, like, lines, I'd be like, uh, I think you should fly LiDAR. <laughs> so mm. um, now if he's inspecting them, he doesn't need to fly LiDAR. So right. it's totally different. Um, well, in that case, you could use a Zoom or something, right? So we it's are seeing inspection. a lot of reports of the old Z3 and Inspire 1 camera doing inspections because you still have a 12 megapixel sensor versus the 2 megapixel sensor with the uh, Z30. Mm -hmm. And while you do not have as much zoom as a Z30, you still have enough zoom to get uh, a pretty high quality image. Right, so. right. Yeah, no, I think he was asking whether or not the M210 would be best for the situation that he finds himself in. And based I, on your experience with a couple of these companies and what you've seen that testing, it sounds like no. Well, but I'm not sure it's so easy to make that assumption okay. because the testing that we saw was on the V1. The V2 we really gotcha. haven't been able to work on okay. because we also don't really care. It's also extremely interesting because, you know, Parrot just announced they're coming out with an enterprise line of drones. And here we are with a non-Chinese manufactured drone developer who's been in the market for a very long time. It's arguable, actually, that they've been in this longer than DJI. I don't, I don't think that's true. But everyone's got to remember the Parrot AR 1.0 and the 2.0 that was out in like 2010 or 11. I know the F450 was out in that same time frame, but um, it wasn't a RTF drone. The 450 had to build, so it only attracted mm. a certain type of clientele. Right. But anyway, going back to this, if he's already stuck with the uh, M210 RTK and he doesn't want to sell it, I'm saying he uses the X7. He'll learn all the oblique formulaic stuff that we teach in our class. In fact, I'm giving a speech on it, and it just reminded me I still haven't given Pix40 all my information yet, so I really need to do that. So anyway. Um, well, if we didn't answer it, give us a call back. Yeah, Let us know. For sure. And, uh, well, I guess you'll be, uh, you'll be seeing um, Paul and the crew in uh, a little over a week in yeah, New York. So super excited. If you have not registered for that, by the way, and you're in the area or you can get to the area, check it out. You're, you'll just be amazed at, at what you learn and what you'll be able to do coming out of that class and be a part of the community of people that have taken that class that continue to work with each other on, on uh, jobs they're getting, how to get the most out of the, the data that they're collecting, et cetera, et cetera. It's, uh, it's another sort of subgroup that's uh, really cool and helping each other out. 
Yeah, and they are, yeah, they really are. Well, on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. We greatly appreciate you being here and listening to us. Please leave us a review if you want to help out the show, because we would greatly appreciate it. But that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.